Hi everyone, welcome back to my videos. I'm so excited to be talking to you guys today. I really wanted to make a react to-do list for a while now because I think it does a really good job of showing the fundamentals of React and kind of a little bit what it's about, especially when you're learning React. It can seem really overwhelming. There's a lot of moving parts to it, you know, with state and props. Uh, components. There's so many different things to kind of learn and when I was learning React for the first time I remember the to-do list being so difficult to do. It's kind of like an intro into React. If you can do a to-do list you've accomplished one thing and it feels really good. So I really wanted to make a tutorial kind of showing how I make a to-do list and walking through the steps of that and once you kind of have the basics of React down you really can just grow and continue on from there which makes it so much fun and easy to, or not necessarily easy, but enjoyable to continue challenging yourself and learning and um, making different projects and um, applications with it. So I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks guys. Okay, so today we'll be building a my list or to-do list app. And as you can see, you can add different items into the list. And then as well, you can delete these items. The whole purpose is really just to play with state and get familiar with React. So you could really call this whatever kind of list you want. Let's set up the environment first. Once we have created our React app by doing create React app, we can start deleting some of the files that comes with create React app, such as app.css. Um, as well in app.js, we can delete the app.css and the logo. This is really just some files that comes with create React app. As well, I'm going to delete the image um, that comes in app.js because we don't need it. We really don't need anything inside of app.js at this point. As well, app.test.js, let's delete and index.css we will delete as well. Really I'm deleting all these files because for this project we only need app.js and index.js. We actually could do everything in app.js um, but I'm going to separate it out a little bit more which I'll get into later in the tutorial. But basically let's just start fresh, do something like hello world and then I'm going to go into index.js and delete some of these files as well. Then I'm going to open up the terminal in Visual Studio and start the server. We can start the server with npm start, which will op open up a local server. Um, and we can go into our browser and see now we have hello world, which is really great. So then if we go back to our app.js file, let's take out hello world and start putting some real JSX in there and JavaScript and get going. Now we can start making some JSX in our app.js file. I like doing JSX first because it kind of um, gives a structure as to what functions we need to create. But before that, let's do the constructor, constructor which will contain props as well as super. Uh, that contains props as well. And let's do this.state. We will have state that will equal new item, which will start with a blank string. And then as well, a list, which will be equal to a blank array, but it will really contain all of our items inside the array. Okay, now let's create a div. Let's start working on the JSX. You can do JSX a lot in, um, I usually do JSX kind of first in my projects because it gives a nice structure once again, um, and I can see what I'm going to be building for my function. So inside this div, I will do a description of add an item, which will let the user know to add an item. And then as well, an input form or an input. First, we'll do a break actually, so there's space. And inside the input, let's start with the type, like what kind of type the input is. And in our case, it will be text. As well, let's do a placeholder. Um, so what the description in the input will say, and it can be type, I don't know, item here. Then let's do a value which will equal this dot state dot new item. And the value will take on the new item every time um, a user adds that to the input. And then let's do an on change which will have an event that will call this dot update input. And that will be a function that will have a new item as well as event dot target dot value inside of it. And that will call that function will be called every time the on change um, is run. And let's have a button on this, which will be for adding the text that the user inputs on the input. And that will contain a on click, which will call a function every time the add button is clicked. And okay, let's make the function, which will be called this dot, let's call it the function add item. And then let's add the text. We'll just say add for now. And then let's close off the button element. 
And now we can create the add item function, which will um, actually make the JSX that's calling the function start working. Um, and then we will do this above the render. So let's start by doing add item and calling that function, or sorry, creating that function. And inside of this function, we will first create a new item with a unique ID. So then every time the um, new item is input, it will have a unique ID, which we can identify the different list items by. And we will do that by doing const new item, which will equal an object. And inside of here, we'll have ID, which will do one plus math random. So we'll get a random unique ID every time. And the value of that will be this dot state dot new item dot slice. Then what we will do is we'll take a current copy of the list items and we will do that through const list equals and then we'll use the spread operator to take the current copy to take the current copy of the list items and then add on to it this dot state dot list we want to spread this dot state dot list into the list and then what we will do is add the new item to the list so we'll just do list dot push and then we'll add the new item Lastly, for this part, we will update the state with the new list and then reset the new input item or the item input so that the text isn't continuing to show up there. We can just have a fresh slate every time the user adds the item. So we'll do this dot set state and we will call that and inside of there we will have the list which is equal to list so we can just short from this and put list and then we will do new item which will uh, be back to its initial state of um, two strings. Okay, so next we will do a function that's really good uh, for including if you're going to be using local storage in your project. We will do update input, which will have a key and a value. And inside of here, we will um, update React's state by doing this dot set state, calling it again, and there will be a key and it will be equal to the value. And once again, this is really more so if you are going to be implementing local storage into your project. I'm adding it in here because in another tutorial, I will add on to this and hopefully um, include local storage into it. Okay, now let's create the delete item function. And when we go back to our code, Actually, before we create the function, we should probably do some JSX and map over the list of current items that we already have so we know which ones were which items we actually can delete. So let's start by doing a unordered list here. And the unordered list will really take in um, the current state of list and map through that. So one second here, let's create the unordered list. And then we will do two curly brackets. Oops which will contain this dot state dot list dot map and we'll be mapping over each item and we will be returning a list which list or if you're using map you have to use for each item it will have to have a unique key so in this case i'm going to do make the key equal to item dot id so because every id is unique in this case and then that will return in the list, it will be an item dot value. So the value of the item will all, um, will be mapping over and we can return that. Then we will have a button which will, here, and we always have to have a closing tape for button. And the button will have a on click, which will call the function delete item. So on click equals two empty brackets, arrow and this dot delete item, which will take in a the item dot ID. So every time that we are going through the map and we get to this part, we can delete the item item dot ID. Now we will start creating the delete item function, which will take in the ID. So now let's start again by making a current copy of the list of items, and once again it's const list equals spread operator this dot state dot list. Then what we will do is we will filter out the item that is being deleted. And that will be const update, uh, let's call it updated list, which will equal list dot filter, and we will call filter, which will take in an item, and the item will return item dot ID if it's not equal to, oops, 
if it's not equal to the current ID. Then we will update the state by doing this dot set state, calling it, and it will be equal to list, which will now be the updated list with the deleted ID. Okay, amazing guys. We're going along really nicely here. So if we go back to the browser and refresh it, we can see we can add, type in an item. So let's do hello world and click add. And if we click delete, it will delete, which is really exciting. So now we have completed our to-do list, which feels really good and we got through it. And I mean, it doesn't look pretty, but with some CSS and styling, you can make it look really nice. And now we know a lot of the basic functions here for creating a to-do list. I'm not gonna go through styling the app with you guys because this tutorial is really more to focus on creating the functionality for a to-do list. However, I'm going to list the CSS below. And thank you guys for watching. Bye.